Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. It is 8.58, it is 64 degrees, it is the day after Super Tuesday. And have it is recovered? the moment after the storms. Yeah, have you recovered from Super Tuesday? Big I, I think I have recovered, have you? I think so, I hope so. God, yeah, that was quite the, I, now we gotta start gearing up for November. Ooh, that'll be fun. This is gonna be a fun summer. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be You're kind of a politics. wild one, isn't yeah, it? So. Ooh, when it comes to politics. And something you might be able to do, sir, well, before you start, before you describe this one, mm -hmm. when you read the headline of what it was, what'd you think? I knew. Oh, well, see, that's not fair. I didn't have no, I you've had no idea. Heard, you've never heard of pickle before? Mm -hmm. Well, I've heard of pickle, but the way it is a venue chicken and pickle. I thought, wow, I get a chicken sandwich and a pickle. You're thinking of Chick-fil-A. I'm thinking something like that. <laughs> because they have pickles on their chicken sandwiches. Exactly, but, but no, no, like no, 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 no. This is a brand new entertainment venue that's coming to San Antonio called Chicken and Pickle. What is pickle? Pickle is, all right. It's a hybrid. Of, it's is, it's a pickle. hybrid of tennis, badminton, and table tennis or ping pong, played with paddles. It's considered to be a good sport for all ages. So this place is going to be over there near UTSA, where everything else is. So, it's the top golf like pickle. The, yeah, it's the entertainment spot in San Antonio. Apparently, there's going to be a full service restaurant, mm -hmm. a rooftop bar, lawn games, and six indoor and five outdoor pickleball courts. It's supposed to open by mid-April at five. 215 UTSA Boulevard. It's a mostly popular game played as doubles on a court half the size of a tennis court and an oversized ping pong paddle and ball similar to a wiffle ball. All right, so that's the pickle part. The chicken part, yep. all the chicken is locally sourced. Like that. Never ever chickens which feature no, wait, it's locally sourced, never ever chickens which feature no antibiotics or hormones and a variety of delicious dishes. Like according that. According to the news release. This is their third location, expecting to hire about 150 people. That's not a bad deal. That's a cool thing there. Once so, again, this is... Um, chicken and pickle. Interviews, by the way, if you're interested in getting a job, started to take place March 22nd at 23rd. Go to Chicken and Pickle's website to find out more. So pickle is a game, not something you eat. But you can have pickles with your chicken. But you can have pickles with your chicken. Let's take a look at your rundown. Joe Biden scores big on Super Tuesday. So I'm here to report, we are very much alive! The former vice president is projected to win at least eight Super Tuesday states. In California, a new wildfire has been threatening homes near Los Angeles. This fire has burned at least 175 acres in the city of Norco. People had to evacuate when flames threatened about 500 homes. A deep cleaning underway on airplanes as health officials race to contact passengers who flew with one of the country's newest coronavirus patients. North Carolina announcing the state's first case, a man who traveled from Washington state to the Raleigh-Durham Airport. President Donald Trump is donating his quarterly salary to efforts to stop the growing coronavirus outbreak. The White House press secretary tweeted a picture of his check along with the announcement. President Trump has made history. He's believed to be the first U.S. leader to speak directly with a member of the Taliban. He says they had a very good talk and he says the Taliban wants to end the violence in Afghanistan. Two men were roommates. They're in their 50s. They had an argument that led to one of them slashing the other across the hand. The suspect got away in a vehicle at last check, police were still looking for him. The Supreme Court set to hear arguments today in a Louisiana abortion case. It centers around a law firm that requires doctors performing abortions to obtain admitting privileges from a nearby hospital. Daredevil Nick Walenda, who was hours away from his most dangerous stunt ever. He'll try to walk 1,800 feet across a crater of an active volcano in Nicaragua. Affordable Bentley is only making 12 of these vehicles. The Moliner Bacalar doesn't have a roof, but it does have some very fancy wood on the dash. In fact, the wood is 5,000 years old. A former NASA engineer spent six months building this trampoline using steel and Kevlar to test its strength, and he dropped a car on it to check it out. Because that's what the people want. They, they basically wasted a perfectly good car. Yeah, pretty much so. That's what it looks dropped like. Dropped it off a trampoline, and then it fell off the trampoline onto the ground and crashed. But I bet that was fun. Glad it wasn't that $2 million Bentley. Wow. You see that? Imagine that. You see that? And no roof. You don't even get a top with that. You don't even, I know. You, gotta pay you still got to buy another top. <laughs> I guess so. That's not even right. You needed a top today. Uh, yes, you did. But it looks like the storms have moved on out. Yeah, they're out of here. Look, the sun's starting to pop out. It's kind of a, kind of a cool scene there as we look towards downtown. Uh, the, the line of storms that moved through San Antonio earlier are now well to our east. We still got some cloud cover, though. Winds are going to pick up. That's going to be a big story today. Let's take a look at the radar, and I'll show you where this action is right now. Uh, mainly off to the east of San Antonio. You know, a thin line stretching all the way from 
basically the Dallas area all the way down to Corpus. And that is moving east pretty quickly. But uh, our friends out in Howitzville, you're about to get this line. Some uh, quick showers, quick storms moving through here with this. And it'll be out of here pretty quickly. Uh, we also have some showers behind all of this. Kerrville up to Fredericksburg, seeing a few showers. These are all working north. And I still think we could see some showers here in San Antonio today. 64 degrees at the airport, 60 at Boulevard, 55 comfort. Winds are starting to pick up. And yes, it will be windy. Uh, we're expecting winds out of the northwest 10 to 20, gusting to 30. High temperature today right around 73. We're going to talk more about rainfall totals. How much rain do we get? Well, more on that coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. All right, here's a look at Trans Guide I-10 at Frio. Remember this morning, we have wreck after wreck after wreck. It looks like the roads are finally starting to dry up a little bit and traffic's moving much better. But pay attention when you're out there and use your blinker. Yeah, that's one of uh, David's pet news. The final voting numbers in Bear County delayed by several hours last night. The hold up due to a glitch in the software system. Our Sarah Costa tells us exactly what went wrong. Good morning, and the elections office is still trying to figure out exactly what happened, leading those poll numbers to come out so late just before three o'clock this morning, especially when those polls close at 7 p.m. It is not normal for those numbers to come out that late. But last night, the Bear County Elections Office says they had some software issues throughout the evening, which held up the posting of the cumulative voting numbers, which include election day voting numbers, early voting numbers, and absentee voting. The Bear County Elections Office says there are 280 vote centers located throughout the county, and because voters could cast their ballot at any center, it changed the dynamic of the voting process and reporting of results as well. The software company for the new system had representatives at the Elections Office all night trying to remedy the issues, but there was not an exact answer from them for what went wrong. Kellanen went on to say that she is very pleased with the voter turnout, calling it extraordinary. The final numbers were 122,159 early voters with a total of 253,071 votes cast. Now the elections office says they are looking into what went wrong with the software so they can fix it before the upcoming May elections. From the newsroom, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. They, so after they eventually got all those votes counted, here's a look at some of the results in the Texas Democratic presidential race. Big surprise. Remember, it looked like Bernie Sanders was going to run away with this with all the polls up to Election Day. Not the case on Election Day. Biden won it with 34 percent to 30 percent. That's the entire state. And if you look at Bear County, you can see that actually Bernie Sanders was ahead. Yep, 33 to 29. And taking a look at the Republican side of the race, not much of a competition on that one. In the state of Texas, the current president, 94%. And in Bear County, well, it's a pretty similar story, 93%. Another one of those races a lot of people very interested in, the sheriff's race on the Democratic side and on the Republican side. Start with the Democrats. You can see Javier Salazar had 54% of the vote, so he will be ready to go in November. No runoff there. On the Republican side... No runoff either. No runoff Gerard either. Gerard Rickoff. And for several candidates, the race is not over because there are multiple races that are headed to the runoffs. Well, that election is scheduled for May 26th. So here's a look at some of the races heading into the runoffs. First up, two Democrats looking to unseat Senator John Cornyn. There were 12 candidates in this race. Mary M.J. Heger got the most votes. And right now, we still don't know who will be in the runoff with her. It's a tight race between Royce West and Christina Ramirez. Bear County Precinct 2 Constable Leticia Vasquez will face um, Eno Medea in a runoff. Bear County Commissioner Precinct 3 race also heading into a runoff on the Republican side. Tom Rickoff and Trish DeBerry. For U.S. Representative District 23, Congressman Will Hurd decided not to seek re-election. The Republican candidates wanted to take his spot are heading into a runoff. Tony Gonzalez and Raul Reyes. And finally, Democratic State Senator race for District 19. Zichel Pena Rodriguez, Rodriguez rather, will face off against Roland Gutierrez in the runoff. Again, that runoff election is going to take place May 26. All right, these are just some of the results from the primary election. You can find a full list of results on KSAT.com. You can also take a look at how Texans voted for president based on the race, sex, and education. That and a lot more on our website. Got a lot of it broken down for you. Just click over on the Vote 2020 tab on the top 
of the page. All right, let's move on to your morning headlines. A lot going on around the country outside of Super Tuesday results. We have new information in the aftermath of that deadly weather that ripped through Tennessee. And we have video of an amazing rescue in New Jersey, but we start with the latest on the coronavirus here in the States. Max Massey now joins us here in the studio with that. Good morning, Max. Good morning, guys. A lot going on, obviously. The election yesterday, mm -hmm. everything going on around the country. But yeah, we want to start with the latest on the coronavirus here. Now, Nancy Pelosi calling for a bipartisan meeting in D.C. A Democratic aide says that the speaker invited Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy to discuss plans as we move forward. Right now, no talk about closing public galleries or trimming tours in D.C. The leader is expected to focus on making sure that our country is prepared, making sure that D.C. is prepared, keeping Congress's doors open. That meeting set for 2 p.m. Now to the latest on the tornado that ripped through Tennessee, the deadliest tornado in seven years. And take a look at this video. This is what neighbors are still waking up to today. Now, a state of emergency has been declared in Tennessee. Rescuers still going door to door searching for survivors until they clear all the structures in the hardest hit neighborhoods. East Nashville residents, they only had six minutes to prepare for that storm to hit. It felt like a big rush of air pulling us up. And everything uh, just started going away. Rain started pelting us, kids screaming. And yeah, you're hearing from some of the hardest hit individuals over there. Now tens of thousands of people still without power. Communities coming together, though, starting to clean up, starting to move forward. Tennessee's governor calling the efforts a profound turnout. All right, guys, well, now let's head to New Jersey. The video really telling a better story than I can. An incredible story of a life-saving rescue. Let's take a look at this video. It all started when a tractor trailer ran off the right side of the road into the express lanes, hitting the guardrail on the bridge before catching fire. You can see this body cam video. The state trooper sprinting towards that vehicle already on fire. He and a lieutenant pulling the driver out of that vehicle to safety. And you can't really hear it very well, but literally seconds later after they pulled him, that vehicle exploding. So thanks to the heroic work by the state trooper and the lieutenant, that driver sustained only minor injuries. And lastly, heading to California, a crafty homeowner able to use her sprinkler system to stop a would be thief. So take a look at this in it. You see a person on a bike ride towards the property. When that person got too close, he was actually hit. Here it is again. Coming to bike. You see him wearing a hood, could be a thief and boom. Now, the homeowner says that thieves have been stealing tools and other items from vehicles in her community. So she set up this motion activated sprinkler to protect her things. Clearly, it was a move that worked really well. That's awesomeness. So <laughs> I love it when the, the bad guy uses are scared of water. <laughs> yes. I don't think it was just the water. I think it's something sprayed him around the eyeball. And he's like, what is right happening? Wow. He's like, oh, they're watching me. I got to go. I got to go. Things. That's great stuff. Cheaper Thank you. We got more stuff coming up, right? I'll be here all morning. Good. Love it. Thanks. It is 9-11 and 64 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. You may have seen a lot of construction around the Broadway corridor. One of the things being built is a first-of-its-kind building, hoping to set the area up for future success. Our Max Massey is going to take us inside. Hey, Tim won a game. That his first ever as a head coach, and he's a winner. Winner, oh, winner, chicken pop, dinner. Uh, I don't, I don't think it really means anything for Pop. <laughs> we got highlights coming up later on. <laughs> What would you do if someone brought a llama to your wedding? The hilarious story of a man who did to his sister. Coming up next. And take a look at the stock market. Wow, big bounce today on the positive side. We're up over 500 points, 26, 4, 24. Some speculation is investors are uh, surprised at how well Biden did over Sanders yeah. and healthcare stocks are rising sharply. So presidential race and coronavirus mm -hmm. affecting the stock market. Hey, breaking news just coming into our newsroom. Michael Bloomberg has suspended his campaign for president after such a poor showing on Super Tuesday. Yeah, he spent over $500 million on ads just for Super Tuesday. Didn't do very well, ended up with 44 delegates, but he says that he suspends his campaign. He's going to now back Joe Biden. Yes, he is throwing his support behind Joe Biden.
Hey, if you've ever planned a wedding, you know it can be quite annoying when people start asking for plus ones. But the plus one a man in Ohio brought to his sister's wedding was quite peculiar. Mm. Yeah. He brought a llama. <laughs> it all started five years ago when the siblings were discussing the woman's future wedding. Well, the man said if he had to go, he was bringing a llama with him. Thinking it was a joke, the woman accepted. Uh huh. Fast forward five years, the man kept his promise. He rented a llama for $400, even had a custom tuxedo made. While the llama had to stay outside the wedding hall, friends of the bride placed two inflatable llamas at the sweetheart table. Wow, well, the woman says her brother definitely made her wedding memorable and that she's already started mm. planning her revenge. Mm -hmm. So if he's not married yet, you can only imagine what she's going to do. She's planning mm. the revenge. Mm. Some serious llama drama. Oh, boom, boom. I can't, I can't wow. take credit for that. It's the, have you ever read the, the, the llama llama books for kids? Mm, no. Okay. There's llama There's drama in it. Folks out there with kids know what I'm talking about. But these llama llama books, and it talks about llama drama. It's it's a whole thing. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Did for a that. llama ever go to a wedding? Educating. In any of these books? They haven't yet. Well, there you go. There's a new, new book, book on the way, baby. <laughs> All right, now the storms are gone, but yeah. it's going to be windy today. It is going to be windy. So on the backside of this system, we're going to get some pretty gusty winds out of the northwest. We're already starting to see some of that. First, though, let's talk about rain totals. Where are we at? Uh, in northwestern Edwards County, uh, the big winner today, 2.37 inches. Otherwise, it was pretty much less than an inch just about everywhere you went. Uh, here in San Antonio, about half an inch on average as far as rainfall goes. And uh, New Braunfels, about 0.68. Uh, Seguin, 0.33, uh, about a quarter of an inch there over at Leon Valley. It's nice to see some rain. It, again, it didn't amount to much, but uh, that thin line of storms moved through just before rush hour this morning, caused a few problems on the roads. Now it is well to our east, east of Gonzales even, and starting to move in around Howitzville. So folks in Howitzville, uh, Quero, you're starting to see the rain. Uh, just a few lightning strikes here. This is going to be a quick hitter. So uh, some brief heavy rain, maybe a couple lightning strikes and it'll be out of here. It's going to move off to our east. Here's the setup and boy, this is a big system. There's a lot going on here. So we have a big upper level low swinging through Texas to the north of it. Good heavy rain stretching from Midland over to Dallas. There could be some flooding there if you're moving or going north up I-35. And then the severe weather stretches all the way across uh, the Gulf Coast states here uh, down in the parts of Florida. Tornado watch boxes there, severe thunderstorm watch boxes across far east Texas. So it promises to be a busy day for us. We're just basically going to get some windy conditions and a few wraparound showers. That'll be possible through the afternoon before this all clears out tonight. Here's the scene outside right now. The sun is out. We're getting some blue skies here in San Antonio. 64 degrees. Dew point is at 56 and there's that wind northwesterly at 16. There's some of the breaks in those clouds we were talking about. Temperature wise, mid 60s around Bear County. And as we zoom out, uh, 60s for the most part, but you will find some 50s up in the hill country and the clouds are thicker up there. So temperatures will not be as warm there today. Wind gusts already starting to kick in. We're seeing gusts over 20 miles per hour. This is only going to get worse through the course of today. We could see gusts up over 30 miles per hour as we get late into the afternoon and evening hours. So yes, it will be a breezy, almost windy day. Futurecast shows that system moves away. A couple showers working their way in across the northern part of the viewing area during the afternoon hours. And then as I mentioned by tonight, it clear, clears out and we'll see some sunny skies tomorrow. 30% chance of some showers to the afternoon. Temperatures up around 73 tomorrow, 72 and sunny 72 Friday. And then a few more clouds probably by the weekend. We'll get another chance of rain too by Monday. Okay. It looks it was like a wild morning though. Busy. My wife says she got a clap of thunder, shook the whole house, cat run under the bed. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't find the cat. Oh, the poor cat, cat was, was scared. Cat was scared. Yeah. Understandable. So, don't ask me how we got a cat. That's another story. Still ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, construction all over the Alamo City. Max Masti's coming back to give us a preview of a new kind of a, a new one of a kind building along the Broadway corridor. Hmm. That's coming up next. Welcome back. It's 923. Well, San Antonio is growing and changing before our very eyes. It seems you can't turn a corner without seeing construction. One of the areas filled with cranes is the Broadway corridor. Max Massey gives us an inside tour of the Soto, a first of its kind building here that hopes to set the area up for future success. <laughs> A lot of noise today. The building is a six story building. It's 150,000 square feet. This is the first mass timber mid rise building in Texas. If you drive down Broadway, you've probably passed it hundreds of times. 
This is the Soto, and it's unique to say the least. This wood is engineered wood, so we're taking young trees, small trees, and then they're piecing those small pieces together to make big, massive blocks. The Soto is what this entire district is going to be about. John Beauchamp is the chief investment officer at Hickson Properties, but grew up in San Antonio and says this building is part of the future of the city. We love the aesthetics, and we know there's a lot of competition being built in San Antonio right now, and so we like to differentiate ourselves with the look. But on top of that, the sustainability story is real. The timber structure actually has a carbon negative footprint. Carbon negative means the building is removing more carbon from the air than it emits. Basically, it's not only good for the environment, but it's also compensating for other not so environmentally friendly buildings. And I think it says we're a current city. We're modern and forward thinking. It says that San Antonio is on the map of sustainability. As we took our tour of the building, one of the things that was pointed out was the air conditioning and the heating systems. They are in the floor, which I thought was fascinating. It's very efficient. And so air is now allowed to work with the way physics wants that air to work. Cold air comes out, as it heats, it rises. And when it comes to the Soto, being an old timber building not only sets a precedent for sustainability here in San Antonio, but it also could have huge implications on the future of the Broadway corridor. We know that the type of tenants that are interested in this building are interested in recruiting and retaining talent. And for today's workforce, that young talent wants to know that they're in a sustainable building. Hickson Properties is now working with the Cavender family to refurbish the entire area eight and a half acres of land. And John tells me the Soto sets the tone for the district and it allows that second phase of development. Imagine this Broadway corridor with office buildings on either side of the street, with residential towers, with retail. If you're gonna have a great city, you need great people talent and you need great places. Very true. So what does the timetable look like? All right, so the plan is it's gonna be ready to move into by summer mm -hmm. you this brought summer. up by this summer yeah you brought up a great point great viewing oh, for the parade perfect when we were up there on the balcony he said this is going to be the best parade spot san antonio is going to have that's true at the growth we were talking about it's just a it's a mind-blowing when you think about how far we've come in the last few years there used to be car dealerships down there mm -hmm. there was there was a bonanza steakhouse down the street so the craziest part bread speaking, bread of, bread speaking of the car dealership Working with Cavender family, oh. eight and a half acres. So this is just the first phase. This is just a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very cool. Thank you so much. So Appreciate I'm coming that. Back. Lots more ahead on GMSA at nine. Texas is the only one of 14 states that held primaries yesterday. CNN's Karen Kafe is live with a look at how the Democratic presidential candidates did across the other states. And go Spurs go. The silver and black getting a much needed win last night. And it was all under Tim Duncan as acting coach. Max and RJ are here to break it down. The Spurs get a huge win. It was Tim Duncan's head coaching debut. Ooh, yeah, let that, let that settle Jordan. in a little bit, right? Yeah, I, I think know. About I think about that because he's, we've seen him on the sidelines. I know he's been mm -hmm. taking part in yeah. it. So what happened? I mean, he Pop just said, this is your game. Well, he's undefeated. Yeah. He's, he's the, the greatest winner. coach that's, in history. That's actually, yeah. 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 Statistically, well, there's, one one other, there's one other coach <laughs> that's undefeated. And, and don't ask me his name. He filled in oh, for like one What's his name, David? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> get my media guide out. It's like in the 90s. Yeah. But there's, I think there's one other coach that's right. undefeated. Yeah. All right, so we mm, have to look that up. How did he yeah. end up so, in charge of the game um, last night? So uh, yesterday afternoon-ish, around 5 o'clock, the Spurs sent out a, uh, a tweet uh, through their media relations department basically saying that uh, Greg Popovich would not coach the game against the Hornets due to personal business. They didn't give any other reason, and they added in there that Tim Duncan would be the acting head coach. That was the, so that was it. Sub line. That yes. was the best part. <laughs> that was it. That was yeah. like the All next right. line. Analyze yeah. for us his uh, coaching methods Ooh. and stuff. Well, was there a big the difference? Here, right? Yeah. Yeah. There... All right. <laughs> but his hair was on point. His hair did was you definitely see, on point. Did you see the beginning of the game? When he's talking to the, the players before they go out yeah. to, for the tip-off, yeah. he's like trying to get, get his hair. Yeah. 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 Who has better hair, hair. hair, him or Lonnie Walker? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Lonnie. Lonnie's. I like Tim's on. hair. I, I like Tim's hair. Lonnie's is good. like. Yeah, I like good. Tim's I hair. Um, okay, but no, seriously, like coaching styles yeah. and stuff, did you yeah. notice differences? Well, throughout the season, the players have talked about how Tim has really kind of been a help on the bench mm. during timeouts. You see... Tim come out right there. I think this is what David's talk about um, when he was talking to Brent Forbes before the game. 
He does that a lot. So if you've been paying attention to uh, to what they do during their coaching huddles, then you know that Tim is a big part of the game planning, and you know that he's a big part of what the players can do on the court. And I think so, that he has yeah. an individual relationship with a lot of them because he's, I mean, even before he was announced as one of the official coaches, he was practicing with them. He yeah. was doing one-on-one -on -one drills. But, yeah, let's get right to the game. Well, I mean, uh, it started off not great. Tim, Tim was probably <laughs> like, man, I wish I was back home. Um, so Spurs come out. They are down by 17 points at the end of the first quarter, end up coming back, winning this game. DeJounte Murray with a nice bucket there late in the game to put him up by seven at that point. And as the Spurs have done all year, they allow the other team to get back in it, but Stunner. they survive here, yes. Shocked that they allow the team to get back in it. Uh, uh, Kelly uh, they survived this thing, 104-103, yeah. So. I love that. That's I, the exclamation I, wait, point. A little, little close for comfort, but it's a win. Yes. Nonetheless. There's Timmy. <laughs> With his hair. Yeah. Look at this guy. Well, and to win, it's a road win, too. <laughs> a road yeah. win. First of three in a row. Anybody right? else who Let's, we're competing uh, against uh, for that spot, that last spot, oh. lose last night? Did anybody else play? That yes. New Orleans lost, so mm -hmm. that was good. So the Spurs are now uh, three and a half back. Right. But, uh, yeah, they still Only have three and a half? Like yeah, a what a but, told you but the amount is shrinking yeah. of that time to get okay. the three and a half. Right. So it's cautious but optimism. But they were 12th place yesterday. That's what I'm saying. Today, That's a big jump. Like to ninth yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. They jumped. See, I told you it was like a little big. What so, all right, you know what? We'll just we'll settle it. Okay. Do you okay. think the Spurs will make the playoffs? Mm. <laughs> wow. Thoughts <laughs> here. Um, <laughs> I'm saying I'll yes. let you think about I'm that here yes. in a bit. Um, I'm going to say yes. Real quick, though, uh, we we're not sure if we were going to hear from Tim after the game. He was acting head coach, but, you know, the Spurs kind of operate in different ways. But here was Tim. This is only the second time we've heard him all season talk to anybody in the media. This crew that we have here, they haven't given up, they haven't folded, no, no matter what they're down. And again, a lot of guys out of rotation, a lot of guys were asked to do different things. We're playing small, we're uh, doing different defenses, and uh, they continue to show up. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud of these guys. Uh, uh, I think we're heading in the right direction. Um, we need to get healthy, obviously, but uh, um, uh, a great win tonight. So I'm going with Tim to answer your question. Yeah, whatever Tim says. Great stuff. That's what, that's what I'm going with. <laughs> Important to mention, LaMarcus. <laughs> Yes. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge, they do expect mm -hmm. him to be back for the game against Brooklyn. So a uh, good win for the Spurs there. Yeah. Some people, though, a little uh, bothered that Becky Hammond didn't necessarily mm -hmm. get that nod. But, mm -hmm. uh, I, again, the Spurs don't really explain those decisions. So And I read some other stuff. Becky David, David heard more of the sound where he was giving Becky and yes. Will and all the guys. He said, we, we've all been working it's together like all season long. He said, I was just the one standing up yelling at people. Yeah. <laughs> And, and yeah, Pop that's taught him point. well. Pop taught him well. Absolutely. <laughs> he said he will not take Pop's job. Pop's going to have you back. Thank you very much, you guys. Let's take it back outside with live cam. What did you think, Justin? Uh, about Tim Duncan? Yeah, as head coach of winning. And do you think they'll make the playoffs? I, th I thought it was fantastic. I am hopeful. And, yes, his hair was on point, by the way. I do agree with that. <laughs> hopeful doesn't answer the question. Uh, <laughs> positive. You know, they, there's... Put you on the, the spot there. The math is still there, and that's what's important. You still got to have the math. There's always a chance. I'm feeling good about it. Uh, we felt good about the storm chances this morning. They came right through. The timing was just before rush hour, so it did pose a few issues there. Uh, but the home after the storm, take a look at this picture. This is beautiful. Uh, rainbow there. This is out in Mico, uh, right after the storms passed by. Very nice. And we do have some sun out there at this hour. We're going to see a mixture of sun and clouds. Uh, throughout the course of today. As far as temperatures go, or actually the radar, we see that line of storms is moving well to our east now. It's almost to Houston, so it is basically out of our viewing area. Still, we're going to have a chance for a few wraparound showers today, so we're not going to rule a chance of rain out, but it's, it's on the low end. Temperatures fairly chilly up in the hill country, 56 in Comfort, 56 Kerrville. We're in the 60s here in San Antonio with some sun. Uh, pollen count is in, molds in the low category. Oak is up there, but it dropped off some. Ash, hackberry, mulberry, all in your pollen count. And the forecast for today, up around 73. Again, about a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain, mainly north of San Antonio. And the other big story, it'll be windy. Northwesterly winds 10 to 20, gusting to 30 here in San Antonio. Guys. All right, checking the roadways. Uh, there was I-10 at Callahan, no problems. 10 at Frio, looking nice as well. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar.
Google announcing that it will cancel its in-person I.O. 2020 conference over coronavirus concerns. The company is looking into an alternative format. Google I.O. is the company's annual developer conference and was scheduled to take place this May. Now those who purchase tickets will be fully refunded by March 13th. Google also making it easier for people to work remotely amid the coronavirus outbreak. The tech giant making its Hangout Meets premium feature free starting now through July 1st. Those features include virtual meetings with up to 250 people and live streams with up to 100,000 viewers. Users can also record and save their meetings through Google Drive for free. Volkswagen preparing to increase its global push into the electric vehicle market. The German automaker unveiling a prototype for an all-electric SUV dubbed the ID4. Volkswagen saying that its output of battery-powered vehicles could jump to 1.5 billion within five years, a figure which would amount to more than three times that of Tesla's total output. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Hannah Doba from Cheddar Headquarters in New York. And real quick, got some more breaking news when it comes to the presidential Democratic run for the office. Let me see here. Oh, you know, it's kind of ironic that Bloomberg would be reporting this, but Elizabeth Warren <laughs> is apparently reassessing her campaign. She's meeting with some aides to see what she wants to do. There's a lot of pressure on her, of course, yeah, to withdraw her out, support so. uh, behind Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Hasn't been officially announced yet that that's going to happen, but she's meeting with her aides. Um, note to self and to everyone else, mm -hmm. do not order food when you're drunk. With an app. Could be a problem. Could be a problem. Could it was be a, a big problem, problem in this case. Well, it could be an expensive problem. A woman's drunk boyfriend orders Domino's, accidentally sends over two hundred dollars worth of chicken wings to the house. So he was out celebrating. They had apparently had a had a had a baby. Mm -hmm. He was out celebrating the birth of the child, and he has a little too much to drink, and he tells her to order some pizza from Domino's. This is in England, by the way. Mm -hmm. Order some pizza from Domino's. He's coming home. Well, she says the app doesn't work. So he apparently picked up the phone and just started ordering yep. a whole lot of stuff. He's like, Domino's. honey, I'm hungry. Order me some Domino's pizza. She's like, sorry, my app's not working. I'll do it myself. Is that how he sounded? Yes, you think? Probably, probably just like that. So the so, pizza guy showed up with the order. Yeah. The pizza guy says, there's quite a lot here. I need help getting the boxes out of the car. 15 boxes of sides. So here's what the guy ordered. He ordered a medium pizza. At least he got the pizza. Got one pizza. 11 and a half inches. It had stuffed crust, pepperoni, mushrooms, onions, smoked bacon, green and red peppers, jalapeno peppers, tandoori chicken, garlic spread, extra mozzarella cheese. I don't think we have time to list the whole thing. So, uh, But basically, all she had was 20 pounds or $20. Uh, and she said, I, I sure hope he paid for this because I have no cash to pay you. And apparently he did. He has no memory of ordering all of this stuff. And when she told him what the bill was... Well, he was devastated that he'd spent $177. Well, no, it was 177 pounds. It was 226 bucks. Oh, sorry, 226 bucks. 226 bucks. So he ordered, he ordered a bunch of chicken wings, like 11, 14 piece chicken wings, and then seven. A bunch. Three, you seven, know, I've yeah. actually, and, and I was sober when this happened to me, but I ordered um, dumplings from a Chinese restaurant, and I thought it, I was ordering six of them, six dumplings. I ordered six orders, and there were 10 to an order. So you had 60 dumplings? I had 60 dumplings. Freezer? Put them in the freezer? Had them for lunch well, every day? We ate them for about three days and said we're done with dumplings. Anyway, so it happens. Be careful. Your time now is 940, 64 degrees. The results for Super Tuesday are mostly in, but we know some people are making some changes in the campaigns. We've got more from Biden's big win on Super Tuesday. And now Mike Bloomberg is once again dropped out of the race. CNN's Karen Cape is live with a breakdown of Super Tuesday results and what happened today. Welcome back, everybody. Just about 44 minutes after nine. A big Super Tuesday for Joe Biden. The former vice president was the winner in nine states, including a surprise win right here in Texas. But Bernie Sanders holds a lead for the biggest prize on Tuesday's slate and doesn't appear to be backing down any. One candidate who did back down, former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg. CNN's Karen Cape alive in Washington with the very latest. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Leslie and David. Yeah, the effects of Super Tuesday still being felt this morning. Mike Bloomberg ending his own presidential bid and announcing he will now endorse Joe Biden. Biden showing lots of strength just over the last few days, starting with that big win in South Carolina on Saturday. But Bernie Sanders says don't count him out just yet. A super turnaround for Joe Biden's presidential bid. Things are looking awful, awful good. Yeah. 
The former vice president riding Saturday's win in South Carolina and a wave of late endorsements to victory in nine states, including a surprise in Texas. Just a few days ago, the press and the pundits had declared the campaign dead. But the Democratic primary contest is far from a done deal, says Bernie Sanders. I tell you with absolute confidence, we are going to win the Democratic nomination. Sanders posted wins in Colorado, Utah, and his home state of Vermont. The night's biggest prize, California, not yet called. With Biden and Sanders dominating the outright wins, the other candidates sought to pick up delegates to keep their bids alive. Former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg came away with one win in American Samoa. In just three months, we've gone from 1% of the polls to being a contender for the Democratic nomination for president. Elizabeth Warren could not boast any victories, even in her home state of Massachusetts, where Biden prevailed. Still, she vowed to continue on. I was not born a politician, but I was born a fighter. By Super Tuesday night, both Warren and Bloomberg had moved on to states with upcoming contests. Warren in Michigan, Bloomberg in Florida. And the candidates who are remaining in this race, they've got a week until their next big primary day. Tuesday on March 10th, there will be another round of voting. 352 delegates at stake in Idaho, Michigan, Missouri, Mississippi, North Dakota, and Washington State. Leslie, David. All right, Karen, things are changing by the second, it seems like, this morning. Within the last hour, Mike Bloomberg drops out. We also got a report from Bloomberg News, ironically, that Elizabeth Warren is reassessing with her staff whether or not she will stay in. And of course, Tulsi Gabbard is still in. So where do we go from here now? Yeah, that will be the question for these three candidates who are not Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden right now. Obviously, those two looking to make it a two man race over the next few weeks. And there seems to be among some Democrats this idea that they don't want this to be a prolonged primary fight. A lot of voters I spoke with yesterday said the most important thing to them was having a candidate who could beat Donald Trump in November. So obviously they want to be focused on that fight. They saw what happened in 2016, that Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton ran the entire primary calendar. Some people don't think that's a really good idea to see Democrats tearing one another apart when they need to be focused on an incumbent president. So you're starting to see these moderate Democrats like Mike Bloomberg get behind Joe Biden and really try to focus this. As for Elizabeth Warren, will she get out of this race? Will she back Bernie Sanders? The big thing is no matter what side of the Democratic Party you are on, moderate or progressive, nobody wants to be seen as the scapegoat if Democrats lose the general election in November. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the big thing. Let's talk a little bit about California. Uh, that was a big win for Bernie Sanders, of course, and there are a lot of delegates to be awarded the most of yesterday's election. So talk about the delegates and how they're disseminated. Yeah, so 415 delegates up for grabs, and they are still doing the counting out there. Bernie Sanders with about a nine-point lead so far, the last that I checked. So a candidate needs to have received 15% or more of the vote to come out of there with any delegates. So obviously, when you think about that proportionally, um, you know, candidates could walk away with a significant number, especially those who finished at the top. It looks like it's going to be Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. So the Bernie Sanders campaign last night was telling everyone California could make this an entirely different outcome for Super Tuesday. It's still entirely possible that Bernie Sanders could walk out of there with upwards of 100 delegates. So they were very optimistic about how many delegates they would have at the end of Super Tuesday, although we may not know that exact number for a couple days. So interesting to see how California ends up shaking out. All right, Karen, thank you very much for being with us this morning and sharing your insight. Very interesting. It's going to get even more interesting as we go along. Thanks again, Karen. Appreciate it. For a closer look, by the way, at the primary results, go to KSAT.com. We have an article tracking all of the delegates the candidates have won so far. We also have the results of all the local races. You can find it by clicking on the Vote 2020 tab at the top of the page. We have had a very interesting morning with that storm coming through busy. here. busy, busy. Loud yeah, and wet. You guys were busy with Super Tuesday. We were busy yeah. over in the Weather Center. It's been a busy uh, 24 hours. Uh, we had some storms this morning. There were a couple reports of severe weather. Not a large amount, but we did have a couple that I want to pass along. Uh, in the city of Boulevardi, or near Boulevardi at least, we had some reported power lines down near the intersection of FM 1863 and Smithson Valley Road. Also in Fair Oaks Ranch, uh, some sizable hail there, up to quarter size hailstones reported. So there were a couple spots that saw some of these stronger storms uh, leave an impact. Here in San Antonio, it was generally just some heavy rain right around rush hour, which made it uh, a little difficult to perhaps get to work or school this morning. But everything has moved out.
And we're seeing that line actually move well east of us now. It's weakened from where it was when it uh, originally started out here out west. Storms are pretty impressive, and again, we did have some warnings, but everything quieting down at this point. There are a couple showers behind it. Fredericksburg, Kerrville, seeing a few light showers this morning, and we'll still see the potential for a few more as we get into the afternoon. That line has now almost made it through Howitzville and basically moving out of our viewing area at this point. Let's look at the big picture and you can see that this storm system means business. It's big. We've got rain stretching from uh, the Midland Odessa area all the way over to Dallas. Now we're starting to see some flash flood advisories pop up. Not surprising. There's going to be some very heavy rain along the I-20 corridor and then severe weather north of Houston into parts of Louisiana. We're sort of on the uh, south side of this where I don't think we're going to get a whole lot of rain today, but some wraparound moisture, still some lift with this low can't count out a couple showers as we get into the afternoon. Also, the other side to this, it's going to be windy. We're going to get northwesterly winds really kicking in behind this system. There's the scene outside right now, 64 degrees. Dew point is at 56. Northwesterly winds at about 16. And we're seeing off and on clouds here at the moment. 66 Port SA, 64 Randolph. We'll zoom out and you'll see there's still uh, quite a bit of cloud cover across the northern half of the viewing area. If you go south, you're going to run into more sun. There will be warmer temperatures there today, but right now 50s and 60s. And the forecast high temperatures, we're going to get a pretty good range because of those clouds. 58 degrees Fredericksburg, 58 Kerrville, but you'll find some 70s down to the south as far as high temperatures are concerned. In San Antonio, somewhere in the middle there, low 70s. Uh, wind gusts up over 20 miles per hour in a lot of spots already. Gusts could go as high as 30 miles per hour as we get into the late afternoon and evening hours, and then the wind will die down some as we get into tomorrow. Very quickly, the storm system moves away. I mentioned a couple of showers possible across the hill country this afternoon. We'll keep an eye on the radar. Shouldn't be very heavy. Uh, but uh, you may want your umbrella, especially if you're, say, north of Highway 90. Forecast today, 30% chance of rain through 4 o'clock, 73 the high, staying windy all the way through the forecast. Tomorrow clearing out, 72, 72 Friday, some cooler mornings, more clouds by Sunday, and another chance of rain by Monday. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Your time now is 9.55. This is my favorite story of the week so far. Why just, your favorite? I just, it just made me laugh, and I, you're going to have to tell it because I might laugh through the whole thing. I just, it's just, I just found this so funny. A lot of people use fake plants because they mm -hmm. can't. I'm one of them. I don't have a great yeah. thumb, and I, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I even laugh that I kill fake plants. Well, this woman was so proud of a plant that she kept for two years and watered and loved <laughs> and took care of, only to find out... Two years later, it was a fake plant. Fake. So take a look at the oh, picture man. that went viral, shared a bazillion times, ended up on Good Morning America, everybody talking about it. She it even, is she even said that she would get defensive if somebody else came over and wanted to water the plant. Her name is Kaylee Wilkes. Oh, it looks real. Yeah. She, she looks alive. It does. It kind of, it kind yeah, of looks real. Look at it. Um, she said it had such beautiful coloring. It was a perfect plant. She had it in her kitchen window, watered it. As you said, wouldn't let other people do it. She goes to pull it from its original plastic container two years after she pur purchased two years. it. And when she went to pull it from its original can to go repot it. Yeah. <laughs> there's no need to repot it because it's plastic. It was sitting in styrofoam. You could sort of see so, how that might happen. But here was her quote no. I feel like these last two years have been a lie. That's what she oh. said. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. That's so sad.